This was tough. Let's go. Thanks for the clip, Nico. Two Antioch police officers who are being investigated for dumping Michaela Charlotte's body into a dumpster and then lighting it on fire have had the charges against them dropped. Now, you might have noticed I said they had their charges dropped. Not that they weren't found guilty because they literally never went to court to figure out if they were guilty of anything in order for them to plead not guilty. Now, before Michaela was put in a dumpster that was eventually lit on fire, she supposedly died of a fentanyl overdose. Now, these cops did find her, but they just didn't call it in. Now, for some, that may not sound too suspect until you start learning about the context of the antics of the Antioch Police Department, such as the fact this is the same police department that actually had racial texts exposed, some of which show that they were purposely stopping drivers because they were black. Or one cop who said that they would buy somebody a prom rib dinner if they took out the mayor, who, of course, is also black. They even have a civil rights lawsuit against them alleging that they have exemplified a vile mistreatment of citizens in the area. Given all this information, of course the family, like myself, a little bit skeptical and i think that once again given all the information they're perfectly justified in that skepticism so that just it makes me you know it makes me weary that is we continue to see things like this happen people will still say oh but there's good police out there are there the institution needs to go until we can actually change this system and have proper public safety apparatus, this system is unsustainable. There are some other details that I want to bring out as well. I says family of woman found in dumpster is ready to fight after charges drop because police department's racist texts. Now it continues, it says, Nicole Eason told NBC News that the messages which were released earlier this year after a joint investigation into the Antioch Police Department by the FBI and the Contra, uh, Contra Costa District Attorney's Office should have no effect on the prosecution of Ashton Montevallo and D'Angelo Boone. It says Montevallo and Boone were charged with arson and mutilation of human remains on October 17th, death of Michaela Sharman. Both pleaded not guilty to the charges. But one of the things I want to bring out was this says homophobic slurs and racist images. The messages from 2020 to 2021 were sent and received by dozens of officers, including homophobic slurs, racist images, and casual discussion of using less lethal weapons on people, including the city's mayor, who is black. According to an investigative report compiled by the Contra Costas District Attorney's Office, California Attorney General opened an investigation last month to determine if the police department engaged in a pattern and practice of unconstitutional policing. It says, as Rigadu said, Wednesday's announcement marked the first time the prosecutor's office has dropped a felony case linked to the messages. Overdose and death, says Eason, described her younger sister as the life of the party, someone who loved praise and dancing at church and dreamed of opening a salon. She fell in with friends who were into drugs and began experimenting. Says the medical examiner determined that Sharman died of fentanyl overdose, said Eason, noting that her family had attended all of the court dates and her sister's death, including the preliminary hearing where a judge determines if prosecutors have sufficient evidence to make the defendant stand trial. Eason said that during the court testimony, Montevallo and Boone were accused of dumping her sister's body in a dumpster they grabbed from a nearby building after she overdosed at an abandoned apartment in Antioch, a city of roughly 114,000 northeast of San Francisco. The men were captured on security cameras, borrowing a dolly at a, from a 7-Eleven and pushing the dumpster four blocks to a pay, paved trail where witnesses from a nearby homeless encampment saw them allegedly pour lighter fluid into the dumpster and set Charlemagne's body on fire. Roughly a week later, after Charlemagne's family reported the 25-year-old as missing, Eason said authorities confirmed her death. Eason compared the events to labor pains. She said I didn't have the joy of getting the baby out. She said we got death instead. As the family found some solace, learning of Charlemagne's case, cause of death, says she died before her body was torched. So that is some of the details 
surrounding her. So my question is, number one, who did she get the drugs from in the resulting of her overdosing? And how did the police find her? And another question is, what did they do at the right after they found her? I'm going to be honest with y'all. I have a feeling that those two police officers did something really disgusting before they burned her body. Defund and abolish the police, baby. I don't want to attribute anything to them allegedly, but I think allegedly they did something before they burned her body. Allegedly. I got to say allegedly to cover my ass. If that was my sister, let's go to the video that I have. Antioch is just devastated after learning that prosecutors are dropping the case against two suspects because the main witness, witnesses, excuse me, are Antioch police officers involved in that racist texting scandal. Kate Jana Katsuyama spoke with the mother and sister of the victim in this case. Jana. Heather, this has been such a difficult and emotional journey for them. They say they've been in court for every hearing and were stunned to hear that this case was being dismissed. Michaela Shalman's family says the wounds have been ripped open again. I was destroyed. Sad, beyond control. It's been eight months since 25-year-old Michaela's body was found burned along a trail near Gentry Town Drive. We'll never see her get married, never see her have a baby. None of those things because two men took her life right down there. Now, they say they're grieving a second time. Contra Costa County's District Attorney's Office announced Wednesday that prosecutors are dismissing the case against the two suspects. The reason? Prosecutors say the case against the suspects Ashton Montalvo and D'Angelo Boone relied heavily on investigative work by Antioch police officers who are part of the racist text message scandal. They are... You can't even depend on investigators investigating their own because they came out as racists in a texting scandal. If you can't even depend on them to hold themselves accountable, then why even have them? You can't even, you can't even bring the people who did what they did to justice. You can't even do that. You can't even hold the officers who burned her body accountable because the investigation had to be done by people who hate people like me. And so what, what in the world, like how something goes wrong, who do I call? Somebody does something against me, who do I call? And people were like, well, we should get the FBI on this. Look, what did they do to, what did they do to MLK? What did they do to Fred Hampton? Who do you call when you're when you're black? Who do you call when something wrong happens? And then on top of it, when something bad does happen and nothing happens, you try to get some justice served to the people who perpetuated it. But then the people who perpetuated it can't even get they can't even get charged because the people who are supposed to investigate them are also racist, also homophobic. So what are we to do? And I'm gonna tell you this, this is all to the, the, the white people out there who are watching. If they're doing it to us, they're going to do it to you and they probably have already. They're doing it to us, they're doing it to you. It's just easier to do it against us, people like me, because there is this dehumanization that is more allowed within this country. So anybody that's queer, LGBTQ, something bad happens to them, eh. Somebody who's black, eh. Because people will make excuses, well, you know, if they weren't the way they were, then maybe they would have been more safe, which is complete and utter bullshit. So this is why I'm for defunding the police and abolishing the police that we have in this country. You see, if we have police like they do in Cuba, probably DPRK, places like that, I wouldn't have an issue with them because they wouldn't be doing the shit that police in this country do, right? Because they're actually more devoted to, to public safety. But we have a gang of thugs that wear badges and have guns that do what they want to do with us with impunity. The right thing to do was 
if you found her, check her vital signs. And if she still has vital signs and she's not dead, they have access. Police also do have access to Narcan to help reverse the effects of certain drugs. Or they could just do that and then call, you know, first responders, call the ambulance, paramedics, in order to take her to the hospital. Like I said, if you burn her body, you're burning evidence. If you burn her body, you're burning evidence. What happened after the overdose or what transpired before the overdose? These are valid questions, are they not? What did y'all do to get in your mind a logic of, oh, let's just burn her body? Y'all don't see that one come off as, as suspicious? Y- y- your mind's going the same way, right? Right? 250,000 tested rape kits in this country that haven't even been submitted or looked into. How many of them rape kits got the DNA of a law enforcement officer in it? Abolish the fucking police. Let's go. Message scandal. They are material witnesses to the case. And uh, no one, uh, no prosecution can proceed if the material witnesses to the case cannot testify. Assistant District Attorney Annie Esposito reviewed the evidence, and she says the scandal that revealed racist text messages between more than 40 officers is having a huge impact, forcing prosecutors to review every single case the officers touched. They have. To- By the way, there's 99 police officers at that precinct. 99. 45 were on that texting scandal. 45. To be reviewed individually case by case by case we cannot make um because one size does not fit all and because of that it's it's a lot of work it punched me in the gut to know that my sister will never get justice because of something that's going on in our city it just doesn't make sense Michaela's family says in this case, they want Antioch police and prosecutors to refile criminal charges based on surveillance video and other evidence, something that the DA's office says they will do if new evidence emerges. We want to investigate every avenue there is, explore every avenue there is. There's too much evidence. That's right. Too much for them to let this go. And again, the DA's office says that they are open to refiling charges, but this could be just one of many cases that are at risk of being tainted by this Antioch police racist texting scandal. I, you know, I just really just don't, like, I know what needs to be done, but this is why conversations like this are important to show people whatever you think about the, you know, about some anecdotal relationship you have with a police officer this institution is toxic and it was built toxic it was formed toxic there's really no changing it there's no reforming this